All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the two major kinds of encoding, software and hardware encoding, and the big differences between the two. I'm Shinny, and this is Stream School. All right, guys, today we're loading up OBS Studio again, and we're going to take a look at the two major types of encoding. So first off, we have software encoding, which mostly uses your processor or your CPU to handle most of the load of rendering your stream or your recordings and actually creating the video file. The second type of encoding is hardware encoding, which is going to be using your video card instead of your processor. Now, OBS is going to require both a processor and a video card in order to do any kind of video rendering or streaming or recording or anything. But depending which one you use, will put more strain on either your processor or on your video card. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our settings here in OBS and I'll explain why you wanna use one or the other. I'm not really gonna go into a whole lot of details or comparisons between the two. One of the big things you wanna keep in mind though is something like software encoding does really well if you have a low bit rate where you're not feeding it a whole lot of data. Whereas something like hardware encoding actually does much better if you're feeding it a very high bit rate. So how I usually have mine set up is to have the software encoder handle my live streams. I don't have the greatest internet upload speed, so I wanna have a lower bit rate for my live streams, but I still want it to look good. So by using that lower bit rate and then using software encoding, it puts the, the workload onto my processor which allows that live stream to still look good even with a lower bit rate. I'm only running a 4,500 kilobit per second bit rate for my Twitch streams, and I'm running them at 720p, 60 frames per second. I could go a little bit higher than that, but I found that 4,500 looks pretty good for what I'm doing. To contrast that, I'm using 30,000 kilobits per second for my hardware encoding for my recordings and I'm recording at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Now I'm actually recording at the same time that I live stream. I do both at the same time. I don't just live stream or just record. Sometimes I do, but whenever I'm live stream, I'm actually doing both at the same time. By splitting them up onto different encoders, it splits up that workload and lets me have two different resolutions and two different bit rates so that my local recording can actually be a much higher quality than what my live stream is. So that way I can edit the footage later if I want to. So we're gonna go ahead and go into the settings here and we're gonna go to the output tab. Now I have mine in advanced mode. This is the same tutorial setup that I've been using for the previous OBS Stream School videos. And on my streaming tab, you can see right here that my encoder is X264. And there's also the option to use the H.264, which for me is the AMD Advanced Media Framework. You may have a different name here in the parentheses, especially if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. I have an AMD RX 5700 XT for my graphics card, and so I use the H.264 hardware encoder for my recordings, but we'll get to that in a minute. So as you can see, I have X.264 as my encoder, so I'm using software encoding for my streaming and then I'm rescaling the output to 1280 by 720p. You can see right here my bitrate, 4500 kilobits per second, and Twitch recommends a keyframe interval of two. Now I also have my CPU usage preset to faster. You can change these to other settings. The higher on the list you go, the easier it is for your processor to keep up. So if you don't have a very strong processor and you're really noticing you're, you're dropping frames, you're really having some trouble, you can raise this setting up. By default, it will be on very fast, which works very well. I have mine set to faster because that makes it look just a little bit better with that same amount of bit rate, but it does use a lot more processing power to make that happen. The lower you go on here, the harder it's gonna be for your PC to keep up. The, the harder it will be for your processor and your computer to keep up. All right, so now we're gonna go over to the recording tab. As you can see here, I am not rescaling my output. I am leaving it on the default 1920 by 1080p. And then under the encoder, you can see that I'm using the H.264 AVC encoder, the AMD Advanced Media Framework. Because again, I'm using my AMD RX 5700 XT card. It's handling all of the recording and not the streaming. 
Now, as you can see down in my preset down here, my target bitrate is set for 30,000 kilobits per second. And I'm able to handle this no problem. 1080p, 60 frames per second. I have no lag with my video card. Now, my peak bitrate is only 28,000 kilobits per second. And I don't understand Personally, I don't understand the difference between the target and the peak, but I know that by default, the peak was set a little bit lower than the target. So when I increased my target bitrate up to 30,000, I increased my peak bitrate as well to keep it closer. And I have not had any issues with, with this specific setup right here. All right, now for some use case examples. So let's say you have a really, really good processor in your computer. You have the, the newest Intel i9 processor. You've got a Ryzen 3800X, something like that. You have a really great processor in your computer, but maybe you're still running an older video card. Maybe you haven't updated yet. Maybe you're still running an old GTX 970 or maybe even something even older than that. Maybe you're running an old 750 Ti or something like that. I don't know. We're just using this as an example. So in that specific case, I would try to use H.264 for anything you're doing. I would probably also set up two separate profiles. One profile for just streaming and one profile for just recording. And you may actually have issues if you're trying to stream and record at the same time. You'll probably have some issues if you're trying to stream and record at the same time like I currently am, just because you won't be able to record in a different bitrate than what you're streaming at very easily at all. It, it will actually put way more work on your processor than doing one or the other, especially if you're trying to change bit rates. Now, if you're able, if you have a higher upload speed and you're able to stream at a higher bit rate, you can probably get away with both streaming and recording at the same time using the same encoder. But in this specific instance, I don't know if that's such a great idea. Now let's say that the reverse is true. Maybe you actually have one of the best video cards on the market right now. Maybe you have a, a 2080 Ti or the RX 5700 XT like I do, which I'm not trying to say that those are a direct comparison or anything because the 2080 Ti is obviously a better card, but those are probably the two best cards from AMD and Nvidia currently on the market. But let's say for example, maybe you have an older processor or a lower quality processor. Maybe you have a, a Ryzen 3 with only four cores, eight threads, or maybe you have an older Intel i5 back before they had hyper-threading, like a 4690K like I used to have. In that specific instance, I would try to use hardware encoding as much as possible. That way you're not bogging down your processor with unneeded encoding steps while playing your games. But if you're trying to stream, you might not be able to get the quality you're wanting just because you need those higher bit rates in order for hardware encoding to look really good. In most instances, you're gonna have a lower upload speed, so you won't necessarily be able to stream at a really high bit rate. If that's where you're currently at, I would probably recommend focusing more on recording videos for now and editing them instead of just live streaming until you're able to potentially upgrade to a better processor. To recap guys, software encoding is great if you have a high powered processor and you need to stream or upload with a lower bit rate. Hardware encoding is great if you have a great video card and you're able to stream or record at a much higher bit rate. The quality of software encoding is going to continue to look good even at lower bit rates, whereas the quality of hardware encoding will look really bad at low bit rates, but will look really good at high bit rates. Software encoding will also look good at high bit rates, but in my specific use case example, being able to stream at a low bit rate with software encoding and then record at a high bit rate with hardware encoding really lets me get the best of both worlds there with streaming and recording at the same time. All right guys, I hope this video helped you out in some way. Hit the like button if you learned something new. Leave me a comment if you have suggestions of what I should talk about next time. Leave me a comment if there's something you'd like me to cover for next time in Stream School. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also, I stream over on Twitch, so make sure you check down in the description below. Hit that follow button over on my Twitch channel so you can get notified when I go live. Thanks for watching, guys. Shinny out.